<laughs> There's a famous old statement uh, which I think Newton cited uh, where he told that, well, I'm just standing on the shoulders of giants, you know. Uh, science is built on earlier generations. And for the future research of the black holes, um, these two prize winners will be regarded as the giants on which we stand. This year's Crawford Prize laureates in astronomy, Reinhard Genzel and Andrea Goetz, are being awarded the prize because, together with their research teams, they have proven that supermassive black holes really do exist. The two groups worked very systematically and hard in order to study the very centre of our galaxy and what, what was going on there. Uh, they developed instrumentation and methods for this and it's tough job. It's very difficult, tough job. And they succeeded in finding this black hole. I think that's nice. It's a real discovery too. For almost two decades, Reinhard Genzel and Andrea Goetz have been following stars at the center of the Milky Way. And with the help of giant, powerful telescopes, they have, each on their own, found convincing proof that a gigantic black hole is yawning at the center of our own galaxy. Sagittarius A, the black heart of the Milky Way. You have to have a long-term planning. You have to have a project going on for 10 years before you know whether you have succeeded. So I think it is a, it, you need a combination of very good frontline instrumentation, the biggest telescopes in the world, new methods, to reach this high resolution and work in the infrared and long time persistence in order to really do the job. Not that many astronomers are like this, you know. A simple definition of a, of a, of a black hole is that it is an object which is so dense that nothing can come out of it, not even light. That's why it's black. And in the middle of the black hole, or at the center of the, the, the object, uh, density is infinite. Uh, time and space are distorted so much that you get into absurdities. Literally speaking, you leave our time. And this is the consequences of this wonderful uh, general relativity theory, and it seems to be right. Um, but the problem with the black hole is, of course, to really prove that it is there because it is black in the sense it doesn't emit any radiation. Um, the neighborhood emits, but that's not the same. So you can't uh, trace it directly, you have to trace it indirectly. And that's always a bit worrying whether it's safe enough to draw the conclusion that they exist. Here we have a case which seems to be very clear. A question often asked when, when, when talking about science in different areas is, what's the use? I can imagine there, there's use for, for the astronomy research, but, but can you say something about the use in a wider uh, perspective? Yeah, uh, personally I think it's extremely useful because it gives us a much better and much interesting picture of the world in which we are. Uh, and uh, it also illustrates the rather tight connections between our own life on Earth, on this planet, in this galaxy, and the large-scale evolution of the whole system, on the other hand. We are parts of, a, of an enormous uh, world, and um, I think it's very useful to know that. Um, I think it's of fundamental importance for us in the long run. And I, I would say that uh, it wouldn't astonish me if we are going to write the history of, of um, our civilization, say, a hundred years from now, that these recent discoveries of dark matter, dark energy, whatever that is, black holes, will be regarded much more significant than, in, than any, any precedent or war or economical crisis that people talk about now.